Hi guys, I'm Gerard Vosler, or Gerard Vosler. I'm a vehicle dynamics engineer at Rimats Automobili. Uh, last episode with Mondays with Mate, we received a lot of great questions for our engineers, and in this episode, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. I got a lot of questions in regarding um, what I studied and what I did to get here in Croatia working at Rimats. So I did uh, my master's in mechanical engineering at the University of Pretoria. Uh, my thesis focused on suspension characterization and modeling. To get here as a non-European national is, is quite challenging, but Rimats is quite open to various cultures and I think we are proving that it's uh, beneficial to have that in the company. So it's quite challenging, but my advice would just be to keep on trying and trying and after some time you, you get lucky. Regarding the degree uh, for me vehicle dynamics engineer, uh, mechanical engineering is the core competency. Um, some universities offer something like um, automotive or motorsport degrees. Uh, that can be beneficial. Uh, it's also possible to transition into um, this position from some other um, degrees, but it makes things a bit more difficult. Um, but Mostly what you need is a lot of passion and a drive to just produce an awesome car. I got a few questions regarding the software I use. So how many softwares do you use to conduct the performance simulations and what software would you suggest for students aiming for this job profile? Uh, so we essentially rely on uh, Dimola, IPG CarMaker and then Simulink. So we do a lot of co-simulation. Uh, essentially you need a good understanding of the basics and the, the tool a software is just a tool that you can learn um, after you know the basics. So fundamentally you need a good understanding of a multi-body dynamics um, system like atoms or motion view, something like that. And then for powertrain based simulations, something like uh, GT Suites or uh, Simscape, that could be useful. But like I said, uh, you need to understand the principles and the the fundamentals and then the tool is just something you can learn afterwards. Uh, and the next question regarding the software was, how realistic is the model? Do you validate it? Uh, which testing data do you compare to the results calculated by the model? And how do you include aerodynamic forces into the simulation? So essentially the vehicle model only exists in the virtual world for the initial stages of the project. Um, as the project and the development process advances, uh, we get more test data we can correlate the model with and then we update the, the model as, as the development process continues. So for example, like we're in the stage we're in now, now we actually have vehicle data we can correlate it to. So now I update the model according to actual test data. Previously it was based on what um, other departments give me the models they give me and then I just hope that it's correct, I check it and then we take it from there. So how do we include aerodynamic forces in our model? So we rely on the CFD department, they do simulations in their uh, software uh, and then they have forces based on the inputs. Uh, that would be the initial part and then we place those forces in our vehicle model. As the, we go further in the development process, they would go to a wind tunnel they update their model and then we implement the updated model in our model and then as the process continues we, they'll do full vehicle testing so they'll actually test the vehicle on the road and they'll update their model and we'll update our model accordingly. So the forces are basically applied on the corners of the car. Someone also asked how many vehicle parameters are taken into account in the simulations. Uh, can I name a few to give an impression of how detailed these parameters are? Uh, so I have never counted the amount of parameters. I would guess it's more than a thousand, but something like uh, the bushing connecting the suspension linkage to the monocoque, that has some stiffness or characteristic. This is something is modeled in the vehicle model. Um, something else that might be interesting is we have specified the initial temperature on components as this affects the behavior or the efficiency. So that's just to give you a rough idea, but there's a lot of parameters that you need to keep track of and it can get quite crazy. Additional part to that question was how long does it take to run a simulation? So this also depends on the, the fidelity of the model. Uh, sometimes we want high accuracy, sometimes we don't require as high accuracy. Uh, or we run all the models or just say one part of the, the model. But essentially one, one minute could take up to an hour. Uh, it also obviously is influenced by the computer. So. I push a lot to make sure I get models that are easy to solve and it's quick because it makes my life easier. And how good 
on average, do simulations correlate with real testing data? So as I mentioned before, um, this changes throughout the development process. Uh, we do our best to make sure the, the, the model is aligned with actual data, but until we have data, we are not 100% sure how well it aligns, but we update it as we get data in. So we continuously work with the testing department to provide us data, and then I correlate that, or I might go testing with them and then gather the data, and I correlate that, and we update the model accordingly. So by the end of the project, we should have a pretty accurate model. Another question on software, how do you guys handle simulation model exchanges across the company? Example, for example, with Anna regarding torque vectoring. Uh, so yeah, that's a good question. It, it is quite challenging because each department works in their own software and we might have suppliers giving us some model. So each case is different. We work with um, um, FMI standard, so that's the exchange language we can use, so it will use a FMU model, but each project is different. Sometimes we build the model ourselves based on the data they give us, or we ask them to provide the model we need for our simulations, but essentially each case is different. Noah asked, how valuable is extracurricular experience, specifically former student in university when applying for a job at RIMATS? So personally, I uh, unfortunately wasn't um, able to join Formula Student as my university didn't offer it, but it, I would highly recommend it to anyone interested. Uh, you learn so much more that you wouldn't be able to read in a book. We have many of, or many of my colleagues um, come from a strong Formula Student background, so it's definitely beneficial. Rimats is also involved in sponsoring the University of Zagreb for FSB racing, so we know and understand the value of these initiatives. Oh. This is a good question. How much does driving simulators like Assetto Corsa uh, prepare you for a job in vehicle dynamics? So I'm personally a big fan of sim racing, especially I'm more of an racing guy, but Assetto Corsa is also pretty, pretty good. Um, so essentially, it it's, might not like get you the job, but it's part of the, the passion you live. And for sure, it's about putting everything you learn into practice. I'm quite competitive, so I enjoy racing online but some other vehicle dynamics engineer might not get his fix through that. But for sure, I think it, there is some value in it, and our test driver is also a, a big fan of promoting iRacing to us vehicle dynamics engineers, so I'll always try and keep up with him as best as I can. What do you miss most about South Africa? Uh, so there's quite a list, but I think the most would be just like a braai or a grill or a barbecue, depending on where you're from, with friends and family. That's usually good, but Croatia also does it quite well here. Uh, and next thing would definitely be biltong. Uh, that's like cured meat. Um, Americans refer to it as jerky, so it's like jerky, just better. Um, but I, I get some versions of, of it here, but it's not quite the same. And then lastly would probably be a bottle of South African red wine. Yeah. So I got an interesting question regarding in-wheel motors, like the US Army did as a research project, um, and then also mentioning cheap Chinese EV bike conversion kits. Would it be the same for cars? Um, for sure, it's possible, but legislation, safety, and costs would be your major constraints here. Uh, you can't quite compare a 10-kilogram bicycle traveling at 40 kilometers per hour with a two-ton mass traveling at 300 kilometers per hour, uh, the safety is, is quite different. So from the authorities, you, you might have some trouble convincing them that it's safe and being commercially viable solution for everyone. Uh, but for sure, it's, it wouldn't surprise me if there's already a solution like that out there. So maybe it's something to look into. Next question we have is about ride comfort. Uh, what is being done on the C2 about occupancy ride comfort? If I can scrape together some money for one, Will it have an extremely harsh ride? Um, for sure not. Uh, the ride would be comfortable. But unfortunately, there is some trade-off. We're building a high-performance GT car. We, we focus on performance, but it's going to be comfortable. We have semi-active dampers that continuously change their characteristics every 50 milliseconds or within 50 milliseconds um, to provide the best handling and ride comfort performance. Question regarding general life in Croatia. What is it like to move from a country that speaks mostly English to Croatia? Do you find it difficult to go to a store to order coffee because of the language barrier? Uh, so general day-to-day -day life isn't a problem here. 
although most people don't speak English often here, they, they know it fairly well. So throw in like one or two Croatian words and a smile and it will get you really far. Um, I learned how to order a coffee in the, the first two weeks because I really like coffee. It, it can be quite tricky ordering a coffee, like macchiato, you can get a few different variations. So the best way is just to, for me to order cava es toplo nieko malo. Andres asked, um, can you give us a short rundown of your typical process of validation of the model? Uh, for example, uh, regards to data acquisition. So the C2 is, is quite advanced where we have so many sensors already in the car. So a lot of the times we don't even need to apply um, additional hardware to gather the information we need. For example, temperatures and battery parameters like voltage current, that's already being measured on, on the car. We already have the hardware there. So we essentially just extract the data and then we can look at that. Sometimes when we want to validate uh, other models, we might put in some additional hardware and sensors and then use that. Andres also asked, how detailed are the models in the vehicle model? Like non-linear state space models, semi-empirical models or linearized models. Uh, so the detail of the models varies greatly depending on the model. Uh, the battery model, for example, would be a physics-based model. Uh, I don't personally know the details, but I work with the guys in battery department to develop a model and then maybe we'll simplify it for my simulations because obviously they need much more detail to evaluate the thermal performance or like single cells where I mostly care about the performance of the pack. But other things like um, dampers or suspension might be just a simple lookup table because that's good enough for the accuracy we, we, we need. Okay guys, that's all from me today. Uh, thank you for sending in all the questions. Keep sending them in and the engineers here will try our best to answer them. Um, yeah, go look on the platforms and apply to the positions we have available. We have test engineers, multiple positions. I'm sure you can find something to your needs. And yeah, see you guys. Dovi um, and Totsins.